Will energy prices uh, stay above $75 to $100 a barrel or more? I think they will. Uh, could they fall as low as $30 again? It could. For long, I doubt. Now, if energy prices are going to stay high, uh, then uh, that has all, all kinds of implications for us. Outside of logistics, uh, we are seeing the most extraordinary innovation. It's all part of a $40 trillion green tech boom that's taking place across the world right now. Let me just give you one small example. In the desert around here, in the Arizona desert, we have enough sunlight. If we could put mirrors like these across an area maybe 200 kilometers by maybe 50 kilometers, something like that, we would have enough power to transform the power needs of the whole of America. Now, up until quite recently, that was an illusion because you couldn't get the power from the Arizona desert to New York without frying up the wires all the way along uh, the route and losing most of the power on the way. But then along comes company like, uh, companies like Siemens who have given us the capacity to, tr to, to channel electricity three, four, or even 5,000 kilometers down wires using direct current rather than the alternating current with, their, with almost negligible power loss. How does that happen? With alternating current, you lose an awful lot of power in electromagnetic waves. Uh, you, you, you pick it up with, uh, with all kinds of hum in, in, in radio sets and, and amplification systems and TVs and things like that. But more importantly, uh, you can see it and hear it with your own eyes. If you're near a high-tension power cable on a wet day, you hear the fizz, right? Zzzz. And you can actually watch your electric power just disappearing into the atmosphere. Every wire that has an alternating current through it becomes a radio transmitter. And radio waves are a quick way to lose power. So with DC, which is the same kind of current that you have in a car, which goes from one direction to the other direction, never goes back, you don't get any electromagnetic fog. There's no distribution in that kind of way, and it's a very pure power source. It's technically quite difficult to transform uh, electricity that way from power stations, but it's possible. Now, what that means is that we're now able to power Moscow from the Sahara Desert using today's technology. That's amazing. It's quite costly right now to do it, but we have the mechanism to do it. And we also have extraordinary ways that are coming to us for storing power when the sun isn't shining. One of those is car batteries of electric cars. Put your hands up if you have an electric car, if you own one. Yeah, uh, uh, we have one too in London. You know, you see, what, the thing about an electric car is that it stores power, if you wish, and it can donate power back to the country when it's needed. Now, if we all here had electric cars and all of them were driving around Arizona and all of those batteries are plugged in at night, what that means is most of the time those electric car batteries are charged and when the sun isn't shining, those electric cars can, can donate power back into the national grid. Now, that's just one small but innovative way in which we're finding ways to transform the future in terms of power. Why do I say this? I'm saying because there, you're going to see similar innovation in the logistics and supply chain areas. And for the same reasons. Yes, it's a sexy story to tell, which wins consumer respect. It's a great uh, media story, but it's compelling from the financial point of 